That's been my goal out here, is just to play very safe shots. There at the end, the pressure got to me just a little bit, but um, hopefully I can make those adjustments as well. I'm really happy with the place I put myself in, so I'm hoping that I can just continue to play the same game I've been playing, stay consistent, and then make everyone else chase after me. You know, Aaron played great today. He didn't make any mistakes for us to really capitalize on. I don't know what it was, but I was just putting them edge of circle, a little outside. Just wasn't close enough. Maybe a little bit more focus on my, my drives and my up shots. For having bogeyed in the last two and a half rounds, so I'm really happy about that. Putts up and down. Sometimes I feel really good outside the circle and I'll drop those. Sometimes I feel really good inside the circle. And if I feel like I need to straddle it, I need to straddle it. And, and don't question that because I've done that in some of the majors earlier this year and, and I feel like that's what's cost me. Do what my gut's telling me to do and just go with it, no matter the result. It's either win or lose for me. Yeah, I want that championship. Hello and welcome to all of you in our studio audience, to those of you watching on the live stream, and to everybody on YouTube. This is the one we've been waiting for the final round of the 2022 PDGA Professional World Championships. You are watching it on Jomez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Ulibarri. Aaron Gossage, folks, he has put together a performance of a lifetime, 10 under, 10 under, 10 under, nine under. He is leading the world championships, trying to be the third player ever to win a major before winning an elite series event. He is trailed by this man right here, Paul Macbeth, three back. He has won seven elite series slash majors when trailing by three strokes. More than any other player, he is going for his sixth world title. Matt Oram today is also trying to do what Aaron's doing, being the third player ever to win a major before winning an elite series. He's been there so many times. Can he pull through today? And Calvin Heimberg, his biggest comeback in an elite series event was three strokes at the 2020 Jonesboro Open. Can he put together the round of his lifetime? He's gonna need it, he's six back. When leading by three strokes into the final round of the Worlds, the leader has won every single time. That's 26 for 26. But Macbeth, no stranger to a comeback, only slightly smaller. In 2014, he was two shots down. He did force the playoff and ultimately win over Ricky Wysocki. And his biggest comeback was in the 2019 European Open when he was five back going into the final round and chased down Greg Barsby. Epic performance. This is not the guy you want trailing you going into the last round of a major, but history is on Aaron's side. Macbeth, however, man, He's, we've said it so many times, he's, uh, he's annoying. He's yeah. just always there. <laughs> There's that thing persistent. called beast mode. Yeah. Here we go, hole one, par five, 1224 feet with OB down both sides. It gets a little bit more narrow as you get up to the green. And then there's that little patch right in front of the basket that's out of bounds. Makes these guys make that decision. First on the box from Grand Junction, Colorado, shooting 39 strokes under par. Representing Discraft, your leader, Aaron Gossage. Aaron's trying to become the lowest ranked player to ever win the world championships that Title currently belongs to Greg Barsby when he was 11th ranked in the world. Aaron currently 25th ranked in the world. And we've seen her all week, the blue blaster. He is throwing this thing phenomenal with the forehand. Another big one here. I'm gonna guess that's approaching 450. Yeah, for sure. Next on the tee at 36 strokes under par, from Huntington Beach, California, and representing Discraft, and five-time MPO world champion, Paul Macbeth. If Paul wins the day, he'll be the most veteran player to ever win a world championship with number of professional events played at 359. Wow. More than Ken Kleima when he won in 2006. Wouldn't be in Poria without a little bit of wind, too. The wind's picked up today. You can see the flags in the back. 
all puts this one out nice, gets the rise out of it. I mean, this is going to be almost picture perfect for probably a side arm. Yep. I would think. Windiest round of the tournament, yeah? I would say so, yes. Yeah. Good timing, Emporia. on the box. Shooting 34 strokes under par for the week from Riola, Alabama, and representing Westside Discs, this is Matt Orem. Mentioned this in the fourth round, but if Matt Orem finishes with a podium finish, it will be the longest stretch between first podium finish, which was 2005, and the last podium finish, if he does that this weekend. What a career. 17 years in between those two. And what's crazy about that is you saying that he's never won an elite series it's just or a major championship. That's just mind-boggling to me with how many times he's on the podium. Easily one of the best ever oh, to not have that, that feather in his cap. Part of the 2022 Professional Disc Golf World Championships presented by Dynamic Discs, shooting 34 strokes under par from Safety Harbor, Florida, and representing Innova Champion Discs, this is Calvin Heinberg. Calvin hit the target off the tee shot three times in round four. He's going to need some fireworks, like we said, six. Or he's actually only five back of the lead. I got that wrong. Five back of the lead. He's going to need fireworks if he wants to get back in this thing. And we talked about it yesterday for Calvin. It cannot be those routine mistakes. Mm -hmm. you, we expect so much from him because he is such a phenomenal player, but he has to get up and down every time he's within 300 to the basket. This one's going to be flying past everybody. You see a, mm -hmm. a good 100 to 75 feet. You got to imagine the way that they've been consistently playing, that the winning score has got to be somewhere between 47 to 50-ish, maybe not quite 50 with the wind. But with Calvin being at 34 under par, it's got to be very low today. Same for Matt Orm. Nearly 600 feet off that tee for Calvin. Huge. We've seen Aaron go with the sidearm, sidearm second shot. Looks like he's going to do that again. The last round, he cut it pretty close to those trees on the left. Let's see if he can. Keeps it inside. I mean, this is going to be perfect. Yeah, this is the fifth easiest hole in the course. This is one you definitely want to start off with a birdie. The out of bounds only really begins to get tight once you get down to the thousand foot off the tee range. But before that, the fairway is pretty wide. No reason to make an early mistake and go out of bounds. This looks great. Good control, doesn't push it too far. Be, That's about as good as you yeah. can re reasonably expect in two. That's between 260 and 285, I imagine. Almost right on top of each other as far as where they're trying to land their second shot, which is interesting because of how aggressive some people go off the tee to get that extra, you know, 100 feet going down the middle. Being hyper aggressive really doesn't get you all that much. see exactly what it buys Calvin here. He is able to go fairway, certainly, but does he push this too far? Oh, he bounces off the wall, perhaps? Wow. Coming in with some steam, Calvin Heimberg playing a little ricochet action on his second. Going to get away with it. Man, if luck's on your side during this round, that's exactly what people need to win tournaments. A lot of skill, a little luck goes a long ways. This looks great, wow. and it checks up before the tree. Simple 15 feet left for the birdie. And what a way to set the tone if you're Aaron. Poetry in motion, watching Matteo throw that. Slightly long, but C1, so he'll be happy with that. So crazy to see him playing on the lead card again. I remember when I first came into the sport, watching him in his Yankees jersey. Derek Jeter. <laughs> and he was so young, I think he was 16. 17. 17, uh -huh. 17 years old playing on the lead card of the world. And then like you said, 17 years later, just still doing it. Same form, same everything, classic, Paul with it. Great upshot right there. 
everybody in position except for Cal so far. Well, you say he's never won any elite series events. He just he hasn't on the PBGA level, but he's won just about everything you could possibly win in the Southern Nationals circuit, which is not PDGA sanctioned, or not a lot of the events aren't. Ooh. Oh my gosh, Calvin. I thought that was going in Great for a second. Shot. Yeah, I'm guessing he probably has close to 300 wins, at least over the 200 mark, without a doubt. Certainly. Can't be having those mistakes, though. Yep, it has to be mistake-free. Aaron from 19 feet. Oh, no. Whoa. And that is exactly what you worry about on a final day. Short arms the putt. This guy is not yeah, going to give that opportunity away. That is a shark tasting blood in the water. Wow, that is a really tough way to start. You know, and there's something about that, too. When you're playing against somebody who doesn't have the experience and you see that happen, the confidence booster that it gives you moving forward, I something mean, that Aaron's going to have to put away real, real quick. He's going to have to make something happen in the next two to three holes if he doesn't. Like you said, shark. It's, a, it's, it's something that everyone watching that can feel that. The I tension thought, of like, oh boy, what's this going to mean? Hopefully nothing. I mean, there was no question in my mind. I didn't know if he was going to make or miss that. I, I thought he would make it, but I was getting ready to kind of judge how solidly he hit it right. to kind of get a, right. a, a view of his nerves. And unfortunately, totally missed the mark there. Tough par to take after a really well-executed first three shots. Macbeth now, big turnover. Can he clear the tree? Not quite, but he gets a pretty good push through it. Yeah, I think if he actually misses that tree, he'd probably be in worse position. Yeah, he overturned it for yeah. sure. And this one looks a little better, but oh no, never mind. I, I liked it out of the hand, but boy, did the wind grab that. I'm telling you, man, that wind is a real factor today. It looked wider. It looked mm -hmm. like a better line to me. This is why Aaron is in the position that he's in right now. This might be too right. It's shorter than he'd like. But, but. we've seen Aaron's forehand distance all week, and yeah. that is certainly well within range. This was a headwind, so you, under, you can understand that correction. I mean, you, the last thing you want to do is flip that forehand over and go straight out of bounds. So a little extra safety doesn't hurt him. He clearly has enough distance to get there. The angle is just going to be a little trickier. Definitely a final round miss. You have to err on, this, on the side of precaution. I haven't seen that yeah, route ever played. Interesting. I wonder if that's a last round adjustment due to the wind. But the low ceiling shot, Matt Oram executes it. As we look at the overhead here, Paul McBeth, not necessarily his best drive, but he still outclasses the rest of the group. And we're going to see how aggressive Calvin and Matty O get from I would say in the 390 to 400 range to I mean, the pin. They got to be taking that low backhand down the right side, hoping yeah. for the late skip. It's low ceiling. Calvin's going to show us right here. See, there's that ceiling. Yeah. Got to be tricky. low. You want to push towards the back side of those bushes because you're never going to get there. And then gravity takes you to the left because it does slope downhill pretty quick right when you get over the hill. I know because I hit that tree every single time. <laughs> Certified expert. Matt Arm, this has got the height and the width. Does it have the fade or the uh, hyzer? I don't, I don't think it can. Like on a turnover, if you're going around those branches, there's not a disc made that finishes back to the pin on that line. But he did set up a long putt. So Aaron is likely to go test the OB over here. A little bit. Yeah, this is about 380, 390. Needs a big skip. Got one. And a little bit of a roll forward. Can't throw it much better than that. And a chance to atone for that early miss. It's going to be about the same distance. But this time he's not going to have a tree poking his back. Sure. Yeah, this needs to miss all the limbs if Paul wants to have a look. It does. 
and just outside C1. Not a bad result. I'll tell you what, Paul makes that, it's gonna make Aaron's 18 footer feel a lot longer. Yeah. Alvin got the short forehand here. That's well thrown. Matty, oh, man. par, par start. Matt's always a crowd favorite. That would have been mm -hmm. huge. Just the momentum, the excitement that he'd get from a putt like that. Beth for birdie. Oh. Ooh. Very, very low effort. Macbeth laughing that one off, but I guarantee you he's feeling the pain of that miss as Aaron has a short one to get that stroke that he just lost in the first hole. That miss is going to give him some confidence, perhaps. There it is. Solid. And now it's just golf. Mm -hmm. that, that'll settle him. Back to three. Yeah, he misses that. Oh, oh it's over. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much over mm -hmm. if you miss two like that, I think. But uh, making that settles him down. Now just go to work. I think Matt needs the birdie. 14 of the next 16 holes. You're probably not, as, as crazy as that sounds, you're probably not that far off. Six back. I'm gonna take a look at some of Paul's putting woes that have been present this event. And I mean, certainly in a world, everyone's gonna have some misses, Paul included. But I would say, clearly, it's been a below average putting performance for him as we're used to you kind of expect him to make everything, obviously. I do. These are a lot of 40, 35 mm -hmm. footers, just close, showing a little frustration. And none of them are like egregious misses. It's not like uh, 15 footers to 20 yeah. footers. It's the, the tough ones, the 32 to 40 footers. That but one we just saw was as egregious as it's been. I mean, hitting the, right. hitting the koozie. Missing at that low, that sure. Was, that was a strange one for him. Going down the hill, 466 here on three. Aaron has the power to take this wide route with the forehand. This looks good. Looks really good. Does it have enough forward push? I think I just needs to miss that tree. Oh yeah. 25. Fantastic. Very nice. You know, one thing about Aaron this week is he's, he's, when he's inside that 25 foot mark, we feel comfortable. But any time really since we've been watching outside that, he's made a couple, a couple here and there. Mm -hmm but it's been that kind of low miss that we've been seeing. Look at so this drift from Macbeth. Wow. This is really getting a ton of distance going down the middle and right there at Circle's Edge. Maybe he can learn from, he's even on the same side of the basket as the prior hole. Don't generally see him make the same mistake twice. But back to Aaron, it seems like He's had a lot of bullseyes. Yeah. Like on the par fours. I think that's where he's really been kind of setting himself apart from the rest of the field is going sidearm, sidearm so accurately on one angle. Calvin a little low there and turned over. He won't have much of a birdie look. And Matt and Calvin both. Oh boy. That's almost a guaranteed bogey. He's probably got 80 or 90 feet to save. Aaron, third in the field thus far in parked percentage. Second in circle two in regulation. Usually you're looking up those stats and make sure that I was wrong, but I appreciate you. Yeah, I'm, I'm backing you up, buddy. I got your back. I mean, this is final round worlds. This is a big video. We gotta, we gotta bury the hatchet. Pretend Lift to each be other friends. Up. Let's pretend <laughs> to be friends. Okay, Paul, circle's edge. Okay. 
There it is. You know, there's one thing about Macbeth, too. When the pressure gets on, he does that little fist pump where he putts, and then he's just holding it. That's a terrifying sight. Oh, I'll tell you oh God. <laughs> Big time putt here for Aaron. It's the worst sound in the history of sports. And it's also one of the loneliest feelings. Yeah, he's feeling lonely right now, even though there's 4,000 people 20 feet away from him. Emporia showed up. Let's go, Emporia. <laughs> Hole four, par three, 388. Two options here, backhand low up the middle or big forehand around the outside. We saw Calvin hit the cage up the middle with a fairway driver. And let's take a look back at Aaron Gossage's shots so far on this hole. First time around, a little short, but good enough for the birdie. I mean, the fact that he's two for two on this hole is maybe the least surprising thing. Right. Yeah, because his, I mean, this is a perfect hole for his game. Yeah, I think when I go back in recent memory, I haven't seen anybody more consistent with that Heiser forehand. In one tournament. In one tournament, yeah. maybe ever. Because he throws it so often, but once in a while, I'll see somebody leak it left, leak it right. Yeah. Yeah, this I is good. It. This should skip down the hill. Okay. This is awesome. I challenged our uh, YouTube audience. When was the last time you saw Macbeth throw a, a poor forehand? And they said the playoff hole against James. And I, I contend that wasn't necessarily that bad. If that's the worst you can come up with, deal. I mean, it was a good shot to hit the island and just squibbed out and rolled. I mean, the guy doesn't throw bad forehands. Little higher. It needs to dig, not skip. That's oh. pretty good, yeah. but again, that kind of edge of circle range. At this point, I kind of want him to be there. He needs to make Yeah, got to make one. Got to feel if that for sure. He's parking yeah. a couple holes, and then it comes down the stretch, and he has to make 30 footers, and he just missed two. Yeah. Not a good place to be. Can Calvin do this again? No. No, not this time. Mm. Matt Orham needs to do it this time. He's got to get things going. One over through three is its not going to cut it. This is the final round. There are so many players right there chomping at the bit for the podium finish. Obviously, a huge feather in the cap for anyone to get top three at Worlds. Top 10, top 20. Really? This looks fantastic. Absolutely. Sit. That is like the yeah. textbook Matt Orm angle flight. A little drift. Anheuser, nose up. Perfect. Couple first downs, couple spin moves, couple safe signals. And a physics of Matty O is one of the most naturally talented throwers to ever touch a disc, and his whole throw is built around control. At first glance, his throw looks fairly unique, but he hits all the right points to throw with enough power to keep up with the best in the world. Matteo starts with a higher reach back than most, but you can see him use his wrist to control the nose angle of the disc and work all the angles he's needed for dominating the Alabama woods. As he starts his swing, he gets the disc deep into the power pocket, with his long arms curling around the disc ready to explode out with a ton of power. One thing Matteo does really well is follow through with his whole body. He keeps his shoulders turning and his left foot kicks up as he commits to his angle. Plus, his follow-through has a little bit of that Matty O flair we all love. Matty O is a legend of our sport, playing at the highest level for so many years from where the tides roll in Alabama. Danny's killing these. Love it. I don't think I've ever seen someone with a higher reachback point. It's pretty incredible. This guy right here is also pretty high, but not, not, not that high. That. It's like almost over the shoulder height. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been like kind of a older generation style. I remember Avery Jenkins had always had that really high yeah. swing as well. All right, let's see. Aaron from the edge. Yes. That's the short ones, no. I think 
think it's it's not even about short. It's the early ones. No. Early, well, yeah, it's just. But that one, I mean, I really feel like you can't, you just can't stay nervous forever. Who could fault him for being nervous? If he wasn't nervous, he's a psychopath, maybe. Well, Paul's nervous. Oh, everyone. Just one as well, everyone. Everyone. So. But I think it's not, it's not something that's likely to continue. And you're super encouraged, obviously, to see him step up, match Paul. After Paul puts it so close, you know it's in. Mm -hmm. Then you got to step up and make a big shot, and he does that. And I feel like the story's been Aaron's missed a lot, but still. Yeah. He's two down through four holes, and yeah. he's missed two doinkers. That's how much that's the driver he's playing. Well, that's, yes. that's been his success for the whole tournament. He's yes. just given himself a putt on 90% of the holes. Did he go forehand in round four off the tee? I can't remember, but I, that seems, it seems like a new play. Yeah, I like the play. I mean, I think that right side is kind of where you want to be. Gives you the choice between the backhand hyzer or maybe another low forehand up and under the trees. Ooh, low. This is going to be in a different spot than we've seen him. Gets down before the out of bounds. Mm -hmm. He'll probably have forehand out over the fairway. I don't hate that placement. It's going to be a tough shot because it is a very tight green, but he's going to have a ton of airspace out left. The problem can be if you get too close to those trees and you're not wide, you really don't have a look up that low ceiling tunnel. I think the tough part about it too, as we watch Maddie throw a nice one, is you just dodge that path. There you go. Uh, it's hard. I've, I've had a hard time this week. Trusting how much skip I'm going to get. Zero is the answer on hole five. Even out in that golf fairway? In the golf fairway, perhaps. It's like you got to play a little bit of a, it's a little tricky shot for Aaron, I yeah. think, because you'd love to play a skip shot there. And you just need to, need to know that it's going to jump out of that out of bounds. That's a big drive for Calvin. A big time number. Yes. With a, with a pretty easy mistake to make. You yes. take it wide, you have to because of the tree branches, as we see him way over there on the left. You take it wide, you don't get the skip, and all of a sudden you're re-throwing 45 feet in front of you. Once again, Calvin is putting for eagle on the FPO basket, which means that he's got a very short pitch for the MPO. Let's see how much skip he counts on here. Quite a lot. Oh, when he mm -hmm. takes it inside, uh, I like that. Okay. Sit. Sits. Yeah, sit. More skip than I thought he would have. Yeah, it's well I, done. I thought he would have gone with the high spike. He's been pretty accurate with the spike, but uh, yeah, the low play is definitely there. And it takes a big number out of play. Yes. Matteo's gonna have to go down the middle. This is the low ceiling, uphill, tight tunnel shot that I was just talking about. Okay, I take back what I said about the no skip thing. <laughs> a perfect shot. That'll get him under par for the first time today. Paul going low wide. This has to he catches the path, that's going to be It doesn't count if you hit the sidewalk. That always skips. But perfectly played. Definitely a little bit gutsy to keep it wide of the, path, of the cart path because sometimes if you hit with not enough angle, you will stay out of bounds. And Calvin just going directly at it. Well played for all four. Aaron's going to be first with a putt from Circle's Edge, maybe outside C1. Oh, way short, yeah. Wow, I didn't About think it 50. was nearly that short. And I looked oh, a really good line. A little. I think, I think really? that's shorter than Is he up again? I think that's shorter. Oh, oh okay, right. good. Oh, you meant after it hit the limb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the putt itself, I thought, had a good trajectory to it. it looked like it was online. Bad camera angle, I guess. Yeah, we well, can throw the cameraman under the bus, would you? <laughs> Gonna have to edit that out. Can you edit a cameraman out? No, you, that's on record okay. forever. Nice birdie from Paul. One shot game. Take a look at that leaderboard. Anthony Barella, folks, he is making a run. He is six under through seven. That is scorching out here, and he is only a couple back. He is actually in the mix. Absolutely. Chris Clemens, he's just one back of Anthony's pace. 
And next we've got Calvin Heinberg. Taking a look at Macbeth. Throwing a surprisingly poor shot here for a 340 foot, pretty much a stock backhand. But I don't expect we're gonna see anything like that today. Yeah, second easiest hole in the course. At this point, this feels every bit of a must get. I mean, these easy par threes, you know the back nine has some make or break two stroke swing holes. You just can't take advantage or not take advantage of these opportunities here on the front nine. This is probably one of the softer stretches of the course. This looks much better, has height. I don't like that stall. You don't? No. Yeah, it's, what is he, 28? Oh, he's outside the swing. See how it kind of drifted? Yeah, yeah. Once yeah. that happens in that tail. Yeah, he doesn't have that energy coming in left. Like this one's gonna have some nice skip to it. If it has the distance. It needs to sit down. It could, you know, that's, that's great. This is just kind of like a throwback hole. We haven't had much of this this year mm -hmm. on the tour. And it, and it puts a, I like it. It puts a different kind of pressure on you. Totally. I perform terribly on it. And it, it really makes you angry because you feel like anything outside 10 feet is a failure. I think the one hole that kind of reminds me of this is the beach hole at the USCGC. But this is, ooh, does it go, does it sit? No, it doesn't. It's out by about eight feet. Yeah, but I find this to be significantly easier than the beach even. Oh, for sure. It's shorter and- No OB right. And you don't have to worry about the losing your disc element, but as far as like the shot shape- Oh no. Aaron goes with the mid range and powers it into the right side. Nothing from there. So Paul's gonna have the putt to tie. You know what, I like the little pep talk right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. You know, sometimes that'll wake you up. Early in the tournament, don't like it. You need to stay even keel. Final round, sometimes you make a mistake like that. It's okay to show a little emotion. Oh yeah. Well, you notice Macbeth is uh, putting for birdie. And that would tie things up if Paul makes that putt. And here is that putt. Wow, 40 footer is down, five under through six and charging. And you just couldn't have really written a worse start for Aaron. No bogeys, but you're tied through six holes when you had a three shot lead. Yeah. That, I mean, I don't know. I think you could write a lot worse start, to be honest. I, I mean, I don't think he's doing, he's not doing, he's not doing terrible, but Macbeth he's not doing is terrible. bringing it. But who, who didn't think Macbeth was gonna bring it? I mean. I kind of thought that for the first time ever, he might not bring it. Because of all these injuries? No, I'm kidding. Of course he's going to bring it. It's yeah. the last round of the World Championships. Yeah, agreed. Ah, man. Bogey for Calvin. I think I said, I've been saying it every round, but how good is Calvin? That it just feels like the guy is playing bad. And here he is. He's in. Maybe I'm too critical of place because I just think he's his talent level is just so high. But it's I don't know. Hole seven, par four, six seventy eight. The real crucial thing about this hole is this first shot, low ceiling. It's very sketchy. Yeah, because you're over OB, so you touch any tree this and you're. Gonna be close to being OB left. And, Yes, it does. It's pretty short in terms of what we normally see from the longer throwers on this hole. Well, we have a right to left crosswind this time. You want to get under there with hyzer, flip it up so it drifts down the hill. But today, whatever that normal disc that you would throw on that hyzer line. Oh, is, needs to run. This needs run. slide. Oh, uh, no, early out of bounds. And that's going to be maybe 120 feet off the tee pad before he Yeah, I mean, we're talking 550 to the ground. Yeah. Yep. And so with that right to left crosswind, you show Annie on it and that's exactly what happens. Yep. The wind's gonna smash it. So it's actually a very technical hole unless- You can slap yeah. one of these. 
how far Aaron's been on the first two rounds on this course with this forehand has just blown my mind. This is a more pedestrian, normal, good drive. It's a great drive, really. Yes. But he has been so far up the fairway where he couldn't even make a mistake and not get the birdie. Now he's going to have to throw a good approach from the 270 to 290 range. Calvin just now bogey, so I'm guessing he's going to put six a or seven extra. birdies in a row. On this, but this is probably out of bounds uh, too. No, yeah. that right to left cross wow. one, I'm telling you. But he's a good 500 feet down the yeah, fairway. It's it should be, be an easy, easy par. par, but mm -hmm. par is just not getting it done. No, definitely not. So we're going to see Matt up first, and he's well back of where we have him marked there. As you see where the OB starts, he's going to be just in front of that drop zone marker at the top of the hill. It's a makeable shot, but man, is it big. Yeah, this is totally doable. Seen a few people in this position this week. Super low. Does it push? Yes. That's great. Yeah, that's amazing. That's 500 at least. Tricky little shot Paul's trying to do here. Whoa. Mm, okay. okay. Toro. <laughs> Tricky little putt. <laughs> is that a disc pun or is that just a... That's what it says on the bottom. I know, I know that. I know that's what those are. It's not a pun at all. It's just a... It could be. Another little tester. Mm-hmm. I feel like at this point, anything outside of 15 feet for any of these guys is going to be a tester. I'll stop saying it. Yeah, you Another can just assume tester. last round. <laughs> last round right now. Outside the circle. Oh, boy. You want to say it or should I say it? That one is not in. <laughs> oh, over here. I think he meant it's a tester on the way I back. I gotcha. Yeah. What a save. Wow. That one's in. Man. You got this thing down, Paul. <laughs> we got a putt for the solo what lead. Up, what an up and down from Matty O. Wow. For the lead. Really? No. Oh. Mm -mm. Wow, that's pushing back edge of circle. This is every bit of 26 feet. This is the putt you practice in your backyard for hours and hours. If you're able to put yourself in your backyard in a moment like this at the World Championships, the last round lead card in the biggest stage, it should bring you some calm. What I see there that I really like from Aaron, he just whiffed a birdie, right? Came back from 25, 26, and it's positive self-talk. He's fist pumping. Yeah. Up, let's go. Let's go. Yes. I saved that. Yes. That's big. You could hang yeah. your head there, mm -hmm. or you can take confidence from the fact that you stepped up and hit an important putt to stay tied. Love it. Rating is one of the most valuable things you get with a membership. It takes your performance in sanctioned events, compares it to the rest of the field, and gives you an empirical number to show how well you played. Rain, shine, wind is all taken into account, leaving only one thing, your play. This gives you accurate numbers to track how well you've been doing and your overall improvement in the game. Get your number today. Visit pdj.com join. All right, gatekeeper, chase card check-in. Looking at Anthony Barella here on hole one, about to go to the moon. Oh. People, when you see this come out, people are just laughing. That's all they can do, because that thing came out 100 miles an hour. Uh, six, He's at the top of the hill. 150 or 639, I think. Ugh. It was something insane. Ricky Wysocki for par? I, what did he do? Out of bounds? With I mean, huge putt. I, I don't know. We know Barella. We saw it on the leaderboard. He started hot. Big stepper there. 
No strange to the big forehand. A this little bit like inside. Rising on him. Could be in the woods. It very much is in the woods. Wow. He's gonna knock this down, really? Oh wow. My gosh. <laughs> That's bonkers. Let me tell you this. If he can make outside the circle putts consistently right now, he would probably be in the lead. I played with him one of the rounds, and he was – I looked at the stats earlier. He's leading the field in circle two in regulation. Yeah. And he had made zero after three rounds. Wow. Zero from circle two. Oh, my Think goodness. Oh, well, he's, he's heating up now. We yes. just saw two of them. That's perfect. And he's at 41 under. He gets up and down here. This would be for seven straight birdies. Go and in. and and what? This is this is him for forty two and yes. Gossage and Macbeth are forty two yep. on one hole previous, right? Mm -hmm. So this is T one. That's a share of the lead with those guys having this hole still to play, but. It didn't seem like anyone from Chase Card really had a chance to win until Anthony Brell just. Ratted just seven straight. Wow. Just going down the line, birdie in the front nine. And with that 650-foot drive on hole one, he proceeded to take a par. Could you even imagine? Wow. Hole eight right now, it, if you get this drive inbounds, it's an easy hole. But it's a big blow-up hole possibility. Mm -hmm. And Macbeth has put this super high. A lot of angle, though. No, no chance. <laughs> Left to right wind. You'd like to think that that wind's going to help the hyzer, but not for Paul here. That's that's a big mistake. Huge opening right now for kind the field. Kind of short off the tee as well. Yes. Macbeth and Aaron are actually at 41. That puts Anthony Barella in the lead. Oh, wow. <laughs> Matt loves it. Nick Saban loves it. This is just that mid-range play that we've been seeing from Aaron. Get down quick. Looks like it will. Yeah. And wind is helping that one the whole time. Good disc selection. Even better execution on the throw. Alvin's been pretty quiet, but he is just way too good to go this quiet. I, yeah. I'm waiting for that six, seven in a row we're used to. He, you, you saw him there with Destroyer in hand for a moment. Thought better of it. Goes to the fairway driver, and this needs to finish in a hurry. Oh, there it goes. To, yeah. Perfect. All the way up the hill. That's, that's his big play. Drive. Full throw. That's his. That's how he gets to the position that he's in. Lead card, last round of World Championships. Just being out there tinkering around is not how he got here. He needs to stick to his game plan, and yeah, he did there. You can see Mattia way down the fairway. Surprised to see anyone pass Calvin's drive. Going to see Aaron first, and this is a great play. Put it down the line on the left side. You can throw this thing as hard as you want to. You're almost like trying to throw it in the water yeah, or where sure. you think the water line is. Yep. And that's, that's perfect. Gives you the most angle to hyzer back into the middle. That's There's 210 to the basket. Mm -hmm. I've, I tried to not throw it in the water. And I, just, and I, I don't think that's good advice, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Beth trying to save the par, and this looks like a good start to that effort. Right next to Aaron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't see where you're going to throw this. This right here is a very tricky shot. He's going with the left to right mm -hmm. turn. This is scaring hang, me a little bit. Hang on. I don't think it can at this point. No. no. Oh, so close. The backhand over this hill, the way that it slopes towards the water, is frightening. So tough. Does Matt push it up past the trees? Almost. I oh. think this is one Did you of hear what he just said? No. What? Matt Sexton. When he throws a good forehand, he calls himself Matt Sexton. <laughs> I kind of feel like you just made that up. No, but. you ask him. <laughs> he told me, 
I played with him, and he said, for about three months last year, I was Matt Sexton. My forehand was so good. Well, I'm a little hurt by that, but at the same time, good for you, dude. <laughs> Paul McBeth just threw that pretty close. Easy par save. Aaron yeah. is short again. Those type of approaches need to be no work. Absolutely no work left. Giving yourself too much to think about if you're still having to make those 23 to 25 footers over and over again. Previous rounds, he's been in the bullseye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, he's leaving himself a lot of putts. But that's exactly, I mean, that's how disc golf works, yeah. right? I mean, that's exactly what we were talking about. We expect those bullseyes to turn into 25s yeah. with the pressure, with the mm -hmm. wind. And then it's how do you respond? Here's another chance. Wow. Not going to be able open. to take advantage of the out of bounds drive. Mm -hmm. I can remember us in the, I believe, the second round talking about here's Paul taking his time, talking about. Gossage percentages in the circle and how this week he was putting kind of out of his mind. Yes. And that he was 210th. Mm hmm. And yes, 78%, putting. I think, was the C1X percentage through the rest of the season. And we had mentioned okay, if he gets to the final round and he's in position, that pressure is going to make that 76% come to life because that's really who you are. You don't just flip a switch, that takes years and years and years of right. preparation. Yeah. And we're seeing that. So it's yeah. not a surprise to me. But then again, we go back to the beginning. He's given himself so many opportunities that 76% is actually pretty solid. I yeah. think that if he can get – right now he's not even 50%. I don't yeah, if he, can, if he can finish if, this round at 76. I love his chances. Yeah. Looking at the very difficult ninth, par four, 719 feet through the tunnel. The entire tunnel is out of bounds. So you first thing you got to do, get out cleanly. Then you got to stay to the right of the path, but not so right that you find those woods on the right. Almost impossible to get out of there with birdie. First time this week, this hole has the distinction as being the hardest hole in the course. I thought it would happen sooner. But with the new out of bounds rules that they've implemented on the sidewalk now being able to proceed to where you cross out of bounds, it's made this hole a little softer, yes. still 4.25 average. Did Matt fight through that or is he caught in the corner? I think he's still in the edge. He's going to be in a spot where layup is the play, but not necessarily an easy thing to do. Macbeth has this turned, has good distance on it. I think he's loving this. It's a good angle. I love this tee shot for Aaron. The way that he's throwing sevens tee, he throws the same disc on this hole, just really hit this one hard, try to get around the corner with the forehand. And you know, these guys are aware of Anthony Barella at this stage and what he's doing, because this mm -hmm. is a three horse race now. Yep. Yep. Matty O's still in it. He's four back right yeah. now, depending on where AB is. If, you yeah, know, and a, it, certainly be anything can happen. 42 under. Yeah. So they're actually trailing in. The yes. Point. Well, they're also a few holes ahead. So at this point, you know what Anthony, Br oh my gosh, we'll, we'll talk about Anthony later. Look at this drive. Nice. I think it's the best drive I've ever seen in the hole. Not only is it incredibly long, it's in the perfect angle to the pin. This is outstanding. Yeah. Wow. He Clinical. Might, yeah, my, he might have like you might be able to put a little hyzer yeah, to get in there, like backhand, which is... No one has I, ever approached this no. hole in hyzer before, that's for sure. Unless you go forehand hyzer. Does Matt have a play I to the basket? That's what I'm imagine. wondering. He's going to try. He has sure, to he has try. to try. Yeah, I don't think at this point... I mean, it depends on how, how important that podium is to him. Is he going for the world title important. or is he going for the podium? Oh, I think he, I don't, I don't think he's, do you think he's going for the world title? And if he finishes on the podium, he's happy. But mm -hmm. I mean, he's just trying to play the best golf he can. Oh, he's got no play. Yeah, just, yeah if you have nothing, then don't really roll. Good. Don't roll. Oh, it stays in for him. That has got to be close. That is pretty fortunate. Okay, it's on the line. Because <laughs> he was, I mean, he pushed that 
almost for no reason. Yeah, that's yeah, like, that's what this whole yeah. baits you into. Yep. Mm -hmm. Macbeth with a good angle. Can he get to six under on this front nine? A little tight, a little bit too much turn, yeah. That's I, what we've seen on this hole. Too much turn from down there. We saw Aaron actually do the same thing two, two of the rounds. Get into perfect position, and I like this. He's switching to the sidearm approach. He went back in, I believe. Yeah, you take this up at that cedar tree left of the basket, just swing in front of it. If you can do that, you're going to mm. get yourself a putt. That's a little short outside the circle, but I think perhaps closer than Macbeth. It might be closer, but the, he's outside C1, and there's going to be some low-hanging limbs halfway between where his disc is in the basket, which yeah. is going to make his putt incredibly difficult. Oh, he did have to go in, oh, Heiser. Oh, no. It should work. No, it doesn't work. I don't think, I think that's bad. From that position. And Matteo might be able to just take a par, not lose any more yeah. strokes. Yeah. He'll be four back. Hard for us to tell exactly how close. Yeah, see, oh. this is what I was thinking. He's got almost nothing. I've seen him make it from almost nothing about 100 times before, though. Mm -hmm. So let's see. There's no... That's, That's a pretty zero percent layup, though. I no, mean, there's, just, there's no way in his. I think he finds a way to get to the pin for Matty O's drive somehow. Like he's just a hundred percent full steam ahead. Yeah. Super frustrating spot for Calvin to be. Can yeah. he hit it anyway? No. He's gonna have to work a little bit to save the par now. Okay, Aaron has a putt. 50. To take the lead again. Seems about right. Oh. A very solid effort, especially with the, the hillside running away behind the basket mm -hmm. to give that full run and miss it high. Yeah. In a way, you can gain confidence from that miss. Oh, yeah. And to know that he's only shot two down the front nine, which is by far his worst front nine. I think he shot seven under yesterday. Yeah. Well, he's shooting and, 10, 10, 10, 9. Yeah. So he's not putting a lot of two down nines. No. No, no, no. He's no. had a putt on every hole for birdie. Except for six. Except Just six. like the first time we saw him play the hole. Wow. So uh, it... Well, we got the battle we came here to see. That is right. The goose versus the goat, part six <laughs> or seven yeah. or eight, depending. Tristan Tanner has also moved ahead of the guys on the card along with Chris Clemens. What well, Clemens is tied having. with Orem. Yeah, and he is playing fantastic. Mm -hmm. Nate Sexton, 10th place. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a lot worse than last year, so yeah, kind of embarrassing. Yeah. But at the same it time, it is. You're it doing is. all right. You're doing all right. Well, as always, thank you to our Founders Club. Thank you to all the people in the audience today supporting the coverage. Thank you to those of you on the live stream. And thanks to everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing on YouTube. It's been a good long week, and we got nine more. We'll be right back.